Hi, my name is Dr. Jackie Gerstein, but I typically just go by Jackie. I'm excited to present this preview of a workshop I do for professional development and at conferences called A Framework for Maker Education. So as part of my introduction to A Framework for Maker Education, I'd like to talk about what is making. So along with the slides I prepared, I want to read two quotes by Adam Savage of Mythbuster fame. First one, make something, make anything. Weld, carve, cook, sculpt, sew. Make something in the world that wasn't there before. As humans, there are two things that make us tr truly unique. The ability to use tools and the need to tell stories. Making things is both. Everything made has a story embedded in it. When you make something, it becomes part of your story. Humans are natural storytellers, and when you make new things, you join in the most ancient and important story of all. The second quote comes from his Bay Area Maker Fair keynote talk from 2016. What is making? It is a term for an old thing. It is a new term for an old thing. Let me be really clear. Making is not simply 3D printing, Art Leno, Raspberry Pi, LEDs, robots, laser and vinyl cutters. It is not simply carpentry and welding and sculpting and duct tape and drones. Making is also writing and dance and filmmaking and singing and photography and drama. Every single time you make something from you that didn't exist in the world, you are making. Making is important. It's empowering. It's invigorating but why there are lots of results that are good that are good that come from making we improve the world around us we show people how much we care about them we solve problems both personal and societal so now that we've covered what is making I'd like to get into this framework or providing a context for maker education I get nervous that maker education and the maker movement is going to become flavor of the month, just like character counts and some of the gaming in the classroom where it becomes an add-on at the end of the covering the curriculum and doing the teaching. So now we have time to make. I have the belief that making can enhance any and all curriculum areas, but that if an educator does want to do that, then, the, then a context or this framework needs to be provided. So I adapted this from the experiential learning cycle. And the, and the first step becomes front-loading or framing the experience. And what that does is it provides an intention or a purpose to the learners prior than, to them actually jumping in and doing the making. So there's several ways that uh, a maker activity can be front-loaded or framed. We could use scenarios like you've been hired to create a new invention to bring kindness into the world. You could use essential questions. How do inventors, engineers, scientists, mathematicians, artists solve problems? And for a teacher educator, an educator, what are the attributes of being a maker educator? Questions to help with scaffolding and sequencing the activities. This could be built on previous activities. So students might have learned to you to do simple origami. So you might say, we're going to be doing more complex origami. How, what did you learn in the past that you can use for this, this maker activity we're going to do now? Specifying standards especially the new science standards and the in the US and these are from Canada which I really like a lot and one of my favorites are questions to tap into social emotional learning so this idea of how you're going to handle failure how you're going to handle frustration what are you going to do to work collaboratively what are you going to do if you need to help on on a certain part of the making process so to so again it's this idea of front loading what you want your learners to focus on during their maker activity and then becomes the doing 
such as the, uh, the, the plethora of making activities I started off this video. And then finally, after the making process is the reflection process. And as John Dewey famously stated, we do not learn from experience, we learn on reflecting a, on experience. And there's, there's ways, so a lot of people have discussed it, Sylvia Tolisano at Languages has lots of blog posts on documenting learning. You could write about it, sketch note it, take a photo or create a video about it, tweet, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram about it. This is a graphic that she created to go with that. For my own gifted students, I have them take pictures with their Chromebooks and then we, they blog about their processes. So that's a few examples. We can also use Web 2.0 tools or online tools, which then the making becomes uh, the reflection is also a form of making. So learners could create word clouds, and a lot of these are free. Create a multimedia presentation. Create audio messages or podcasts. Create an illustrated book. Do an animation. Create an infographic. So there's a ways that then the learners can honor the way they like to express themselves in the reflections too. Create a comic strip. Sorry. And then I also have several resources online, makered.com and my blog posts. So I hope you'll join me for my presentation. Thank you for listening.